Hi, I'm Lily from Marino e Vino. Um, it is one minute early. Sorry, you're getting a weird angle from me because uh, I'm going to flip my camera. I think I can do that. Yes, I can. <laughs> um, I'm going to flip my camera so I can show you guys how I experiment with color. So I have a few things. Well, I guess I shouldn't start yet because it's not 2.15 and no one's here. <laughs> but I know some people will be here for a replay. Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Lily and I live in Flagstaff, Arizona, and I am an indie dyer. I kind of um, fell into it during the pandemic, I suppose you could say. Um, I volunteer for the Flagstaff Wool and Fiber Festival and Andrea Green, who owns... Uh, for Corners Fiber Collective and runs the festival. She's an indie dyer as well. And she's like, oh yeah, this is super easy. It, you can just get started with um, Kool-Aid and a pot and yarn. And I was like, no, it can't be that easy. Um, and then the pandemic hit. I was like, well, I have, you know, two skeins of bare yarn. I might as well give it a shot. And I was like, wow, this really is easy. <laughs> and um, I thought it was a lot of fun. So I'm not, I've been knitting for a long time and hi Mary, welcome. And uh, I'm, I like following patterns. I'm not really a designer. I can, you know, kind of experiment, but in, in terms of, um, you know, doing all of the different sizes for designs, I'm not there. And so as artistic as I get is knitting and crochet and, you know, some other fiber crafts because who hasn't experimented with all those. Um, color is really the only thing I can do because I can't draw. <laughs> so dyeing is a lot of fun. So um, I will be talking as I show you guys how I mix colors. I don't know, sorry, I know this is kind of messy, but <laughs> this is my workspace, it's kind of small. Um, I don't know if anyone follows um, Shayna from Yumi Yarns on Instagram, but she's a designer and she has this beautiful shawl called the Andromeda shawl that requires uh, three colors and I saw it and I fell in love with it. Um, and my sister-in-law fell in love with it separately. I mean, I guess she saw it from my post on Instagram. And so she wants the shawl in three colors and she loves maroon. I'm going to show you something really fast. Um, so my sister-in-law is Jillian and she loves burgundy and so I actually dyed up this yarn for her for a pair of socks for Indie Sock Along and um, Shana from Yumi Yarns also um, <laughs> designed the pair of socks I knit for her in this colorway and so she wants, um, Jillian wants the Andromeda shawl and she, we want to do it in the fade which recently was published, I think it was published at the end of August. And, um, and so this is going to be the first color I dye for Jillian, but then I want it to be a fade, um, and it's going to be speckled as well. So I have not actually done the fade that I am planning to do. So what I decided to do is I bought minis from Knit Picks. They are, um, Capretta, which is a nice yarn, um, and it is merino and cashmere and nylon, as you can see. And the minis were only a dollar fifty each. I was like, well, might as well. Um, so we're gonna get this party started. Um, this is a little beaker, and I'm using a technique that I saw. Hopefully, I'm not talking too loud. Um, I saw that um, Rebecca from Chemnitz did this. Um, she didn't do this exact color match, um, but she uses this technique of measuring by millimeters. So, or milliliters, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, I have a baby at home and a toddler, so I can misspeak sometimes. But what I'm gonna do is let's do five mil of the Cabernet. Hopefully you guys can see. I'm just going to put it in the beaker. And then um, off, scene, off screen, I have some water with which to rinse this off so I don't destroy 
my stock solutions <laughs> so that they remain pure. And so she wants it to be a maroon or a burgundy color to a pink. So then I have Valentine blush. I'm just gonna make sure that it's basically well mixed. And I'm gonna do five milliliters of this too. And the good news about using such small yarn or like mini skeins and not that much dye is um, if I don't like it, you know, no love lost. Okay. So, so I have 10 milliliters of the color in here and it doesn't really look like much and the Cabernet also looks quite brown. I have mason jars and each of them has about six ounces of water. I'm just going to pour this in here and kind of swirl it around and it looks much darker in there as you can see. One um, but I still have a little bit in there so I'm just going to get a little bit of water and dump it in. One interesting thing about Cabernet, if there are any indie tires watching this one, is it's very, very brown um, until you heat it up. And then it turns a more burgundy color, which is really interesting. It totally freaked me out the first time. So you can see this looks very brown. But what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna take one of the mini skeins that's pre-soaked and I also already have citric acid in here and I'm going to dunk this in to see what happens. Because another thing that can happen with yarn, it still looks very brown. I should have used hot water. Because then we could see it change colors. We'll just let it sit in here. Um, sorry, what I was going to say is another thing with yarn and trying this experiment out is you have saturation. So it can be really saturated or not too saturated. Um, and so that was another thing I wasn't sure, like would 10 milliliters of dye for 10 grams of yarn be too much or not enough? So we'll see. Um, let's see, when we started, sorry if that metal sound is grating, um, the water was quite opaque and now it's already clearing out and that's why I'm kind of moving it around a little bit. And we're just gonna let it sit in there while I go to the next color and then we'll see what happens at the end. So that was the first color I wanted to experiment with. Okay, I'm just gonna clean my tools really fast. Thank you for joining me today. Um, if you're just getting on, Lily from Merino Evino. Um, so that was the first color from the Andromeda shawl that I wanted to do for Jillian. Um, but I really like blues and purples. And one thing that I've been struggling with is finding a blue that I really, really like. In fact, I can move two of the dyes away. I do this when I'm cooking too. I don't know if anyone else does. You take out all the ingredients. I think that's Misa and Plus. I think that's what they say. Um, and then I put them away as I go so I don't <laughs> forget that I you know have already put it in anyhow <laughs> that's one of my OCD things but um there's a navy blue that is just pure navy blue that I bought and I think it turns out to um uh purple or just dark and not like a deep dark blue which I really like and so I've tried oh I should grab that I, where did I put that yarn um well, I will run and grab it really fast, but um, I did one where I mixed an extreme blue with the navy, and it turned out really pretty, but I wanna see if a black and the extreme blue are the same. So I will be right back. I'm just gonna run and grab it.
Okay. I'm back. Sorry about that. <laughs> but this is how it turned out where it was two parts navy to one part extreme blue. And this is a really pretty color. It's like a slightly darker royal blue. Um, but it's not quite what I was looking for in terms of a fade set that I wanted to do for the Andromeda shawl. So we're going to see what happens <laughs> um, and how it compares to that um, by mixing black and extreme blue. And I think I'm going to do five milliliters and five milliliters again um, because it looks like a good saturation for me. I love jewel tones. It's fall. Like I think everyone's kind of digging the darker tones. Hopefully I can get in here without spilling. Nope, not yet. I'll probably watch this back and be like, oh my gosh, you were silly. When I was a kid, my mama called me Silly Lily. I think that's about five milliliters. And someone else just came on. Welcome. If you're just joining. So right now I'm trying to make a navy blue that I like. I'm going to do equal parts of this deep blue that's quite strong and black. And I'm just experimenting with mini skeins. And I think, I think I stained the wall earlier. <laughs> Don't tell my husband, although he might be watching. Um, <laughs> so I'm making a navy blue that I hopefully will like, and normally, since these are just solid colors for minis, I think everyone should like them. So if you like a color that you see and you want it in a full skein, just let me know and I'd be happy to dye that up for you. Here's black. I feel like there was another color I wanted to make while I was on this live. Oh well. <laughs> if, if you're watching, um, you can let me know another color you might like after. Oh, a teal. I want to do a teal. That's right. Okay. So I have the black and the extreme blue. And so now I'm going to mix. I'm going to kind of shake it. Add a little bit of color to kind of clean that out. Okay. And now I'm going to grab another mini skein. see how this goes. Oh, that would have been bad. <laughs> you didn't see that. Just kidding. It's on video. So this is looking a lot darker than that blue. Granted, when things are wet, they're often darker. And I actually might want to put some more water in these so that the dye can move around a little bit more freely. Um, and I have some clean water here, so I'm just going to add some. put some over there too. I'm not sure if you can really see. Okay. And of course, I, I'll post pictures of how these turned out later. Yeah, this is looking a lot darker, 
more black than blue. So we'll see how that turns out eventually. Another color I wanted to make, I've seen this when I was dyeing yarn just for fun. But I've never been able to actually recreate it because um, I don't know why. It's like these two colors, which is a Caribbean blue and brilliant yellow from Dharma. Um, I have mixed them together and just kind of let them swirl around in the dye pot. And I've seen this gorgeous, gorgeous color before, but I don't know <laughs> what it is. And so um, I'm going to see if I can actually recreate it today. I'm going to add some water to this beaker. I think that's what you call it. I should know my science terms better. I'm not Rebecca from Chemnitz, so I'm not as good at knowing all the scientific terms. But this way it'll be a little bit lighter so I can see it before I add the yarn. Okay. So this is 60 milliliters of water and I'm going to add some like five milliliters again of Caribbean blue. I love blues. So many people love blues too. I don't try to fight it. I have never been a huge fan of Caribbean blue by itself. It's a really bright color and I tend to go towards, um, I don't know, pastels or just jewel tones. But I know a lot of people like bright colors and actually when I spin yarn, and I know a lot of people from Wool and Fiber Arts, um, Spin Yarn, they like really brilliant colors um, because they um, kind of dim down a little bit as you spin and especially as you ply. So when I dye fiber, I definitely go brighter. And I am a vendor for the fiber, or for the <laughs> um, Wool and Arts Festival again. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing this live, but also it's kind of fun. Um, on Facebook, it's different than Zoom in the sense that you just interact with comments. Um, and so I feel like I'm doing like a demonstration. It's a little less awkward if no one's talking or commenting or anything. So, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna take the full five milliliters of yellow, but I'm not gonna use it all probably. We'll see what happens. And this is like kind of why I wanted to do this demonstration, just to see what happens with this. Um, Okay, hopefully you guys can see it all tilted a little bit. This is kind of like with wine <laughs> drinking or when you do wine tasting. I am Merino Evino, but um, in order to see the true color of wine, you actually have it on a white background and you tilt it so you can see the color and it's not so opaque. It's kind of an interesting thing. Okay, so we're getting kind of close. It's kind of a green. And I've used about one milliliter. Oh, is that it? Maybe I'm gonna cheat now. Now that I've measured five, I think I'm gonna cheat. Well, it's not really cheating because I make my own rules. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna pour it in here. Wash this beaker out. Because when there's more water, I can kind of see what's going on. I'm going to swirl it around. I think this was the color I was going for, actually. It's kind of a beautiful emerald. So you can see that I have about four milliliters left. So it was five milliliters of the Caribbean to one of the Brilliant Yellow. Um, yeah, so I think this is basically what I was going for. It's kind of a nice blue green. Um, let's put a mini skein in and see. Normally when I dye yarn and I mix it, I use 
tablespoon measures and stuff, but having milliliters really allows me to have more control, which it's like, of course I should have re realized that a while ago. Oh yeah, I think this was the green I wanted. This is kind of like Ireland green, even though I'm not Irish. It's like a bright emerald or a Kelly green. You can already see that it's taken up most of the yellow already. Okay, so we're just gonna let that sit. But you can see, thank you, yeah. This is the color like that has, um, <laughs> I haven't been able to capture it. And I think that's one of the reasons I became an indie dyer is I love green. It's one of my favorite colors. I, I think blue, green, and purple are my three favorites. And it's so hard to find just the right green, <laughs> at least for me. And so um, when I saw this pop up in my dye pot, it's like, oh, can I recreate that? And I think I have, which is super exciting. I think I might have to dye up a few skeins, like full-size skeins of this. And it's really interesting on nitpicks, it's just as inexpensive to buy a 10 gram skein of like a cashmere blend as it is um, to get like a normal or just like Merino or Superwash or Peruvian um, Highland. And I was like, well, I might as well die with a cashmere, why not? <laughs> so, okay, I'm, let's see what time is it. I can't even see my watch. Oh well. My husband's watching our baby, <laughs> so he's like, 30 minutes. Okay, I can do this in 30 minutes. So now I want to create a teal because teal has been really popular lately, not only because because it's popular, but I like, like teal. And maybe I won't use the beaker. Maybe I'll just use the uh, mason jars um, so I can see the color better. I don't know why I was using the beaker. Maybe I was like being too scientific. <laughs> I'm an English teacher, I don't know what I'm doing. Just kidding, I do. <laughs> but that's also what I like about indie dyeing is like you blend colors, you add some acid. You don't even have to blend the colors. Like a lot of beautiful dyes come just as powders. Um, but you can blend the colors, which I like doing. Add an acid, add some heat, and bingo, you have the yarn you like. Um, and I love doing variegated yarn, but I'm finding so many patterns. So there's five milliliters of the same extreme blue that I used for the blue-black mixture. Um, okay, so I was, sorry. <laughs> you wonder how I teach my students since I go on tangents so much. But um, <laughs> although I love dyeing variegated skeins, I find that a lot of patterns call for semi-solid or solid or tonal yarn, which is also beautiful. And so I've started getting into that more. Um, I'm actually going to be dyeing some yarn for the Stephen West Shawlography, which is coming up in October. I, one of my friend's moms is like, I'm gonna do this, are you? And she's like, I know you're busy. I'm like, you know what? I've bought Stephen West patterns, but I haven't actually made one yet. And I'm just gonna do three to see three milliliters, see what happens. But anyhow, so I signed up for his shawl. Haven't made any of his patterns before, but I'm like, you know what, let's do this. So another project I have is to um, dye up the yarn so I can start in October and then there's spin together starting in October. I don't know if anyone from WAF is doing that. Um, I'll do one milliliter to start, which is funny because, well, let's see, what do I want to stir with? I guess I can just, um, I don't know why I was saying it was funny. Sleep deprivation, it's great. Um, but anyhow, spin together. I always join Grandma's Spinning Wheel, which is a Tucson yarn company, your local yarn store. Um, okay, whoops. Let's do another one. But I might make this teal for my, Stephen West pattern, don't spill it. It's still looking really green. Maybe, did I put too much yellow in it? Well, I guess I did all three. Let's put some more water in this and see what happens. Um, although his shawlography can call for a variegated skein, which is cool. So 
there's more water. Let's see. That's looking very green, so maybe I did too much yellow. So let's add some blue. So right now we have eight milliliters total, and this yellow is very strong. When I started dyeing, I didn't want to spend too much money on containers. So these are still just like old GM and pasta containers, which is kind of silly, but you know they do the job, so why not? It's also better for the environment. Anyhow, I know a lot of people in Wafa, the Wool and Fiber Arts group, um, spin yarn, so maybe you guys will be doing spin together. If so, that I think that's really fun. Especially now, because like, well, with the pandemic, you know, being socially distant and stuff, doing these virtual events kind of creates more community and I meet people that I never would have, like Shana from Yumi Yarns. I never would have met her if it weren't for social media. I'm just gonna put all three in, see what happens. <laughs> um, and so I think it's, it's just great to be able to meet people and still be in a community. Still looking really green. I'm kind of hesitant to put more dye in. We'll see what happens. <laughs> um, it's just great to meet people. And then I have a toddler and a baby, so it's hard for me to get out. But if I don't have to commute anywhere, you know, it works out. At least for a while. I tell my husband that as soon as, well, I guess for my, when my kids are five years old or older, um, oh, you can see some dye from my glove got on there. Whoops. And that's why we use mini skeins for this. <laughs> then I want to go to Napa when they're like five, leave them with my parents or his dad. Um, and then I want to go to a yarn or a fiber festival because I've never gone except for the Flagstaff Woolen Fiber Festival, which is great. Okay, now, so this is more of like an emerald. Still really pretty though. But I'd love to go to Rhinebeck or Stitches. There's so many cool fiber festivals out there. Yeah, so I already have an emerald colorway, but this is like a darker one. I guess I'm really feeling the greens. What do you think? Should I add more blue and see what happens to see if I can get that teal? Or should we just keep it this green? And the camera's actually capturing the green really well. I do really like this green. I must be feeling it. Uh, but I, I do. The purpose was teal. So, normally, if this were on a big skein, I would take out the yarn. I guess I could still take out the yarn. The other jar looks very teal-like. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Maybe I'll just keep it as is. <laughs> I'll keep it as is. Um, but anyhow, if I wanted to alter something, this is clean water. Um, you take out the skein so that it doesn't get kind of blotchy or more tonal, but that can be beautiful too. That's another experiment I want to do is use the big dye pot and just kind of pour colors over the yarn and see what happens. Okay, so um, I'm gonna take my gloves off. <laughs> Sounds like I'm a wrestler or a boxer. Taking the gloves off. Okay. My students groan a lot with my sense of humor. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Anyhow, um, it's been just about 30 minutes and we've made um, four different colors that I haven't dyed before, which is pretty exciting. So we have this dark green, um, and then we have hopefully this navy. In fact, wow, my hands got sweaty under those gloves. It's still like 80 degrees in Flagstaff, which for Arizona, that's mild in September, but for Flagstaff, it's still hot. So this is kind of a dark navy that I like um, 
for perhaps a navy color. This is dry compared to this being wet, so this may change and get lighter. Um, plus, it hasn't absorbed all the dye yet. So we have that dark blue. We have this dark green. This was the color I was going for. Oh, it's so cool. I love this green. And you can see that this has picked up um, the yellow, but there's still some blue in there. And then last but not least, I think, and this is looking darker than the other skein. It might just be more saturated than the other skein. In fact, let me grab it so that you guys can see it. Um, but this will be hopefully the middle color for Jillian's Andromeda shawl, which I plan to have knit by Christmas. Except they'll be speckled as well. So again, this is dry and this is wet. So we'll see. This does look darker, but maybe it's just the saturation. And then the last skein for Jillian's shawl will just be a solid pink, and then I'll speckle them later. So in, in 30 minutes, we made four different colors. I'm just gonna let them sit. Um, the longer you let yarn sit in water alone, and then you can even add citric acid later, um, the more semi-solid it'll be. As an indie dyer, it's hard to get anything to be solid because usually you dye the fiber first and then you spin it and that makes it a solid. And that's how the mills do it. Um, so semi-solids usually as good as we can get. But um, maybe not the colder the water, but the more room temperature the water and the less acid, the more time it absorbs the liquid, the dye. And then you can add acid so that it sucks up the color faster. And then you can add heat. So that's one thing I do, but I've also noticed if I have the water hot or with acid and I just move the yarn around a lot, I can get a pretty even coverage and it soaks up the dye faster. So there's so many different <laughs> techniques in order to dye yarn. Um, but my goal is to let these sit for probably two hours and then I will um, put them in a steamer bas basket to heat them up and set the dye into the yarn. Um, and then I will wash it and take pictures and I'll post it on my Facebook and Instagram page. And if anyone likes these um, and would like me to sell them at the Wool and Fiber Art Show, which is um, the weekend of September 27th, um, I think it's the 27th, 28th, and 29th, but I might be off a day. But it's that weekend, um, and I'll be, I have my um, segment on Saturday afternoon. So if you would like one of these dyed um, in a full skein by then, I can do it in a uh, glitter base, which you can see the um, shimmer on this skein, or I can do a 75-25 sock base, or I can do, I actually did buy skeins of um, Capretta, which is... Um, 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, um, and I'll be using this fingering weight yarn for Jillian's shawl because it's for the holidays, so why not have some luxury with some cashmere? So I'll put the lids on these, finish those up, and I'll take pictures hopefully the next day or two. So thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, Mary, I really appreciate it. Um, it's an honor to um, have you share your time with me. And if you're watching a replay, thank you also for sharing your time with me. And, um, you know, I hope to see you at WAFA. There's so many wonderful vendors there. It's just a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so I hope to see you there. And I'll be going to as many vendors as I can. Um, so thank you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful afternoon.